probably the best thing is to, uh, this is going to vary a bit depending on what your icon is, but in this icon, I think I'll put a, a wash of indicating a bit of a colour here and blending it up. And then I'll do two lots of line. You can see you've got your dark line, not black, but almost black. But in between is a medium line. See that? So I'll make a, make a wash first. That um, It's not as red as the, uh, the hair. Again, the colour will depend on the whole tone of your, your existing face. Um, when you have a beard that's not too thick like this, you want, and, and it's of a younger person, then you want it to be an extension of the skin, really. You know, if it's an old man, you could just have umber and white, and it would look quite distinct from the face. But with something like this, you want it growing out of the skin. You see that there's no particular place where it starts. So um, I'll mix up some Avana here, which is quite a nice shadow colour, and a touch of black, and just a smidgen of red, but not much, just so it relates to the hair. So in my case, Ivana black and a bit of English line red. This is for the modelling of the, the brow, moustache and beard. Um, it, it's the, the uh, as I've often said, the the uh, cheek line is really important to get that right. So you can adjust it a bit with with the, the beard. See if you found that a bit flat, for example, you can use your beard now to bring it in a bit. Wet. At this stage, yeah, just to make sure that it, um, it blends, instead of doing the edge, and then I might make a, I put too much water now, I really intended to have two mixes, one stronger for down below and one dilute for higher up, you can see how it goes. So the moustache, it stops more quickly there, but at the top it's blended, in most cases anyway. Now it's very important that this, see how the smile pushes the, the moustache out, make sure you have a bend. See it comes at that angle, then there drops down more. Some of you are sort of having your bend further down and it doesn't relate to the moustache being pushed out by the lips. So carefully look at where it changes direction. That's concave, convex. Oh, yeah. Convex, concave, sorry. It's not a simple curve. Without it being a, a Hollywood smile, you can get just a, a, gen a gentle, soft smile by having that concavity there, seeing this is, so look at these subtleties. And don't let your moustache be too thin, people tend to make the moustache a bit wiry. Same with the brows, to make the brow, the, both the brow bone and the brow um, here a bit uh, too thin. Um, one way of um, getting a unity of the flesh in this is instead of having the beard and the moustache meet like that, keeping all the, all the skin out, you have a bit of a gap. Um, that's a good example there, you see that? So the flesh comes in, that helps out. If you have the beard and the moustache go like that, it makes them look a lot older. So old people often have that. But often the icons even with old people, it, it still opens up and then you might have another bit of hair coming in there. But 
is quite a good way of uniting the flesh with the beard by having a bit of a gap between the moustache and the beard there. So at this stage, there should be no um, clear sort of boundaries where the hair has begun, except perhaps at the bottom of the moustache, where it does start pretty suddenly. Everything should be quite nicely blended. Of course you can darken something, not by necessarily making it more opaque or adding more dark pigment in, but just putting a second layer on of the same mix is going to be sufficient sometimes. a bit of hair here sometimes, so you can certainly darken under the lip there a bit. And look for asymmetries in the moustache. Like some faces, things are swishing that way, so the moustache ends up being more vertical, but that moustache ends up going more that way. Be really with the moustache be symmetrical, so look carefully at your prototypes. Okay, so we're going to find the brush and do the brow now. Again, you can make minor adjustments now with the brow. If you found that your brow has, is, you know, too, perhaps they're, they're both a bit even, a bit, bit similar, or the bit that you want to avoid them. The whole is just a brow that's a simple curve like that. You know, it might should rise more quickly or just or perhaps be like that. But just avoid a simple curve like that. And virtually always it's thicker in the middle, in the middle of the face, and um, thin as you get further out. <coughs> and the end of the, the brow should just sort of melt away into nothing. Look carefully where the brow is thickest. It won't be the same with every icon, but that's where it's thickest there. Then it gets thinner there and thinner there. It's thickest there. Some brows rise up quickly to get the full thickness there. It just depends on your style. It's the case with this one here, you see. Almost immediately becomes full thickness and then tapers out. So that's a different style there. As with the moustache, on the whole, the upper part is slightly blended, the bottom not so much so, but still, there's a bit of blending there, isn't there? The, the black we're going to put in now won't be right at the bottom. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't say what I meant, let me see. Okay, so we'll add a bit of, um, I wanted that a little bit better, I'll get my trusty razor. And I'll now add a bit of black to that and then put the uh, first of the two types of line in. Just in case you need that, um, I'd like to leave the original and take some aside and put some black in. Yeah, have a picture of that if you've got cameras before we yeah. cover it up. So 
So for this next stage, we really want to um, do really good calligraphic strokes. Um, so you need a good brush with a good point. So uh, depending on most most of these will be thin, thick, thin with a curve. So I advise you to uh, do practice on paper and should you get it starting perfectly sharp and finishing perfectly sharp. So it's sort of variations on that sort of um, that's just one variations on that sort of line. So we'll do this in two phases. One, the lighter first. In parts, if you make mistakes, it's not so obvious, but it's just, um, if you just want dark, really light, light, dark line straight on that, it might be a bit too, too, too much of a, a jump. So I missed that. What did you add to this, this mix? Just a bit, a bit of black. black. I got rather low on that. I want to preserve that. So mm -hmm. in fact, I mixed up a new batch of uh, just a varner and black. Okay. So see how these don't start at the very top, but you have a bit of that shadow, the beard, and then the line starts. If, if the line started there, it would be too sudden a start. Are these the lighter ones? Yeah. You want to vary the pressure, so you don't want a wiry line like that. That's got to be a bit thicker and then thinner. That's more light than that. That's a rather wiry line. That's rather dead, that one. The moustache can just have two, about two or three lines. Generally, getting shorter as they go up. Under here, often you have one under the lip and where the chin is. Really, having done the beard, you need to reintroduce some of this darker shading, even except a darker version. So. Excuse me. There's no rule about how many layers you put on. <laughs> All bells and whistles when you sneeze. <laughs> Bless you. And it's just sort of tweaking now. I'll, I'll put that aside and add a little bit of black in to do blacker ones. Um. Depending on the effect you want and the size, you might put these dark ones in between the others. Or sometimes you would um, go over the top of them, but just darken the bottom. So you just might go like that. So the top third is the light, and the bottom is the darker. There's no one rule. So they go between the other strokes and start a bit lower down? Yeah, they're certainly lower down. And, um, well, they could go on top, it just depends really. There's no, like this one here, then between. Okay. But other times I put them on top of, like here, I think, on top of, but lower down. Okay. So each line would be in yeah. two mixes, getting darker as it goes down. This one you hear, you start over to take the first one he's done, he's been with a, quite a light, and then you see quite clearly here. 
He's gone over with almost black, but that's the original line there, okay. uh, with black at the bottom. And it tends to be thin at each end and a bit fatter in the Yeah, middle. thin, thick, thin, yeah. Then you just keep sort of tweaking until it's, it's right. Can you put black in, in the eyebrows too? Yeah, I'll do that now. Depends on how big your brows are, but generally two lines, if it were really small, you could do with one, like this one here, it's just gone one actually in the middle. The two would be more the norm. The bigger one and the fat one at the bottom, and the shorter, thinner one at the top. I'll improve that later, it's not a really good ending. Then you just keep sort of working it, you might, having done that, you might decide as. I think it's the case that it needs a bit darkening, so I'll add a bit of black to that. And go over it and make the whole beard a bit darker. I've got that idea of searching for the right balance, so it's not all sort of right first time. It's quite nice that people can see that you layer upon layer until you get the balance right. You can see that with some of the great master paintings of Theophan the Greek, the, um, the, uh, the uh, transfiguration it is. He's, he's changed his decision about where the hand should be. So you can see the original born there and the final hand is up here. This is left at there. Yeah. So you can look quite nice. You can sort of hear and think almost. Any questions about that? So with the darker version of your, of whether it suits you really, I mean you could basically some sort of dark pigment like a black, um, a varna and just a touch of red, do your gentle modelling of the beard, um, and then your lines with the darker version of that, and then the darker version still do your final lines. But can I have a look at your, your one there? That, is that what? Gold on the moustache and beard, or is it just the hair? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, it's not a reproduction, but um, yeah. So just sort of bringing up the colour of the beard a bit higher, it was a bit too low. So I'm just bringing it up a bit. Then making it dark. A bit darker and bringing the darkness up further. You add just a touch of black to that, make it dried a bit light. Dilute version. That needs work more, but you can see the eye, the general idea. Brown needs to be a bit darker. So. Everything is just in relation with other things. So once you've done finished the flesh, you may decide to revisit this and add washes of you know, red or something. Right? You, know, you might decide you need a bit of red round here, so you might put a few washes in or something. So. on afterwards so that the, all the hairs are sort of showing that colour as well or would you put the hairs on after you put washes on? Um, <laughs> no, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's necessary, really. So um, that's sort of, yeah, for the meantime, that's, that's, that's sufficient. Then I would then go on to the face next, get all the colour in the face and then fine-tune all, all that. Okay, any questions about that? You've got different beards, so you'll have different treatments, but that, that is a good rule of thumb, that approach. What about if you reinforce the lines in, in, the, in the face and the eyes? Yeah, that'll be the next demonstration, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably do that um, 
probably do that next. So I'd reinforce some of the shadow next. In the same demonstration, I'll put some of the lines in. Um, then that will tell you how white to make the final highlights and then washes of, of red and yeah. sometimes even washes of yellow. You can see he's put a wash of yellow here, I think, underneath. You can see how the, um, the colour of your underpainting, of your membrane, affects everything. It gives the general tenor, mm -hmm. so if it's red or yellow or whatever. You can back off a bit, like if you find it just too red, you can just bleed some of this over the top and do some tweaking. 